Good evening, everybody. This is White Lightning 777, and this is going to be a reaction video to the latest um, Trump indictment. Just making sure my necklace is on. We have to understand that the leftist problem cannot be explained as a point of origin from American culture. Nothing in the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, Federalist Papers, or Anti-Federalist Papers generates anything like socialism, communism, eco-terrorism, feminism, or any of the other uh, degenerate ideologies that we see coming from the left. Okay? So people who think that, well, they want to cut up our, our, our when dealing with left, leftoidism, they want to cut up the problem. Well, one's domestic policy, which we should do, and one which is foreign policy, which we should ignore. There are people who do that. Those people are wrong. The point of origin, the ideological capture of the Democrat Party by the USSR, both before and then completing the process after the assassination of JFK, is widely documented. Hollywood, the Democrats, the party machines are all were all captured by the Soviet Union. These individuals, so-called Democrats, aren't are aren't really Americans. They're they're not operating from an American culture, by or in a, an American culture. These are Sovietized persons. These are what I like to call inos, Americans in name only. They're English speaking Sovietized persons. And, that's, and they are just as dangerous as their KGB counterparts. So it should not be too much of a surprise to see that Sovietized English-speaking people lock up their political opponents on bogus charges, just like Putin and Xi Jinping do. You're essentially comparing Putin, a Russian Sovietized person, when you look at how Navalny was treated, versus Trump, you're comparing a, a, a Russian-speaking Sovietized person, a product of the KGB, to an American product of the KGB. I guess that you could say there's different branch offices. It's not a surprise that, you know, in Cuba, communists took children away from their families, and that the currently the Russian Federation takes Ukrainians away from their families in order to radicalize them into their ideology. It's not a surprise that these transgender activists do the same thing in this country. They're Sovietized people, kidnapping, locking up your political opponents on bullshit charges and rigging elections are perfectly normal for Sovietized culture. That is a part of Soviet culture. It's Vranyo culture. It's, it's a corrupt culture. So defeating this isn't just a question of winning there. Even if we took every leftist in the country and we did went from full Pinochet and we threw them all out of helicopters and you know what? They would be back in a week. Putin or Xi Jinping, which is the spinoff of the USSR that survived. You know, they got rid of all the stupid economic stuff with communism. They're, they're more fascist now. They just kept all the good fascist stuff. You know, freaking perfect, right? They have. I mean, it's no surprise that you have, that you see slave labor around the world in, China, in concentration camps in a system bigger than that of Nazi Germany. Or in Africa, you see Russian Wagners making poor black slave children work and die in gold mines. It's not a surprise that the products of that end up in America. Because Sovietized people are there, like in electric cars. This is essentially an homage. Every time you buy a Tesla, you're paying homage to slave labor. You're, you're buying from the gulag and the mines. That's what you're paying for. So please, if, if every time you see these leftoids driving these electric vehicles, yelling about, oh, we're, we're afraid of slavery and police brutality. Well, okay, if you're so afraid of it, why don't you stop doing it? You know, listening to a leftist complain about police brutality, it would be like, you know, listening to a pedophile bitch about all the child molesters out there or something. 
That's not. And yes, in Russia, the abuse of the Ukrainian children they kidnap and, and rape and all that stuff, sexual abuse is very widespread, just as it is in the ultra-leftist public school system in the United States. The fact is, in America, your kid is far more likely to catch an STD from their teacher than a symbol from Loud A, especially in the inner cities. It's not a surprise that you see liquor stores and drug dealers and poverty in Chelyabinsk in Russia or in Siberia or, you know, prostitutes working for nothing in that area or Gopnik prison culture infecting and influencing the mainstream encouraged by the government to do so. It's not a surprise. It's not a surprise, likewise, that you see the same ghettification in Baltimore. They're being run by Soviets. Now, when the Soviet Union fell, did Putin get all the communists, did Yeltsin and Putin get, or whoever, get all the communists, line them up and shoot them, and at last do justice to the victim of the Holodomor and hang them all like they did at Nuremberg? Absolutely not. Nothing changed. They sat in the same offices, in the same desk, with the same crooked deals, and the same amount of money. The Soviet, when the Soviet Union fell, the oligarchs, it simply meant that the oligarchs could now pay lower taxes because they had less overhead. That's all they were doing was cutting overhead. That's all it was. It's the same old scumbags. The gangsta culture... Pants sagging low. Now in, now, in Russia, it's cold. You can't have your pants sagging low when it's 20 below. So what the Gopniks have is they have these like stupid little pant things they wear, like the stupid little fringe cut and the, th the three stripes on there. And they're like, okay, we're criminals. We're badasses now. And it goes to show you, ghetto culture has nothing to do with race. The same problems that you see in the Sovietized areas in the inner city in America are the same problems you see in most parts of Russia, except for, you know, the few beautiful tourist traps in St. Petersburg and Moscow. Oh, yeah, Putin likes to say, I rebuilt every single Orthodox building. I rebuilt the churches. Church isn't a building. Like in leftist areas, Russians are very secular. Their divorce rate, 70%. Three out of four of their women have had at least one abortion. Not a whole lot of virgins. You may like Russian women, but, you know, Russian virgins are few and far between. The same is true in the inner city. The same is true in these left-wing states. When you get Democrats and, and Sovietized people run cities, they turn into shithole cities that are infected with drugs, crime, prostitution, debauchery, depravity, decrepitude, and death. That's just the way it is. It's not a surprise. You shouldn't be surprised to see that they're the same. How do you defeat it worldwide? Socialism needs to be wiped off the face of the earth. And these ex-Soviet people can't be allowed to continue. Now, whether you have a conspiracy theory, oh, well, NATO's going to take over Russia, or CO2 is going to burn the world into a cinder, these false... Conspiracy theories are simply a product of the Sovietized deranged mind. You know, world-ending false, you know, false apocalypses are a useful tool for mind control, and they're a good way to separate fools from their money. Now, Russia has shifted from its purely communist uh, stance to a more theocratic one. See, Russia, they already captured the Democrat Party, and then handed it off to the CCP. That's been done. That's a fiat accompli. You don't need more left-wing propaganda from Russia. They, they, they've won. What they want to do now is to capture the remaining political party. Okay? The reason you have to understand, and this is something that Zelensky himself has pointed out, we're not the main target. He's just standing in the way. They want us they want to capture us. Why do you think Putin sent in that spy, uh, what was her name, Maria Butina, the one who tried to take over the NRA and turn the NRA into, a KG, into an FSB uh, subsidiary? Why do you think that was? This, they ha you have to, this is a foreign threat. 
anything Moscow does is directed at the United States, even if it doesn't look like it. They may throw bombs in Ukraine, but they're trying to interfere with America's ability to have allies. We, have we ever bombed a country or fired so much as one bullet at a country for joining BRICS? No. So attacking a country to join NATO is not justified. The Ukrainians realize that Russians are the biggest traitors among Slavic people. They look at what happened in Poland, at the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact, and how, how Stalin collaborated with Nazis up until the day Hitler turned on him like a crazed rat. Putin is collaborating with Xi Jinping in the same way. History is repeating itself. That's just the way it is. The Rutschnamir is just an ideology designed to capture a political party in the United States, just as communist Bolshevism already captured one political party in the United States. We have to understand that. This is all a plot from Moscow. It was designed by Marx and Engels, implemented and implemented by Lenin. All of this, they don't need Ukraine. Russia has all the land in the world. Right? What could they use Ukraine for? Not much. But they would be. But if they could walk into D.C. and conquer both political parties, if China could control the Democrats and Russia could control the Republicans, and they can conquer America, they could pillage our country bone dry without firing a shot and without flying a single fighter plane over D.C. That's the plot. That's why, yes, Trump needs to declare martial law when he gets in and, you know, smoke the Reds. If the Reds surrender, if they give up their communist global warming hoaxes and stop grooming and molesting kids, they say, okay, we give up, we lose. That's fine. If not, they can take a helicopter ride just like Pinochet, you know, Pinochet style. The only thing you can do to the only, the only thing you need to say to a socialist are two words, surrender or die. There can be no compromise with evil. Even if you kick them all out of this country and they're gone and you don't go after socialism in other countries, you let Cuba stay, you let Venezuela stay, you let the CCP exist, you let Russia do its thing, it'll go, the infestation will return. Removing half of a cancerous tumor doesn't cure the cancer. You say, well, a guy's got a bunch of cancerous tumors somewhere in his feet, but one or two is close to the brain. Then we're just going to focus on the ones close to the brain and ignore the ones in his feet. That would be the Marjorie Taylor Greene approach. Wrong. You got to get it all. We have to get it all. We have to launch a crusade against socialism and theocracy and wipe these two destructive, existential threats and those two are the only existential threats our species faces and wipe them off the face of the earth and yes we should give ukraine what they need to win that's a good victory that'll shut the theocrats down but you know we also do need to put landmines on the border deport illegals and uh, of course all arsonists pedophiles and drug dealers of course should be euthanized i mean that's obvious as well those things are equally important Foreign policy and domestic policy need to work together. And no one is more important than the other. Anyway, this is White Lightning 777 signing out. Long live the Republic.